To remove the machine compartment, also known as the lower tray of the undercounter unit, tip the unit on its side to access it. The first step is to remove the adjustable legs. Remove the Phillips pan head screws from the bottom pan. There are additional Phillips pan head screws that can be removed on the front of the unit. The lower tray is now slightly mobile, but there are brackets in place. Remove the rivets by drilling them out. The condenser is also riveted into place. Remove the rivets by drilling them out. To slide the tray out, disconnect the wiring at the back of the unit. The hot gas tube routed inside the machine compartment must be unbrazed to pull out the tray. To successfully remove the lower tray, remove the drain tube. Unplug the wire harness from the machine compartment area. If desired, the zip tie can be removed to allow more movement. Please remove the condenser fan shroud to access the condenser. First, disconnect the power wire of the condenser fan motor. Locate the Molex plug and disconnect the power supply. The assumption is the rivets have been drilled out from the underside. There is one Phillips pan head screw inside the machine compartment that needs to be removed. Before removing the compressor, allow access so the suction line and dryer assembly can be gently moved out of the way. The next step is to remove the inverter from the compressor. There's one screw adjacent to the compressor shell that needs to be removed. The first step for removing the inverter is to move it away from the compressor and then push it back slightly. This will disconnect it from the mount. Then the inverter can be moved off to the side. The cotter pins must be removed from the compressor to remove the compressor from its mount. There are also four washers that can be removed. The hardware should be retained for when the new compressor is installed. When applying a torch inside the machine compartment, it's recommended but not required to remove the two grounding wires attached using a Phillips pan head. The next step for unbrazing the three compressor joints is to apply nitrogen. Connect the nitrogen to the service port on the low side of the system that runs into the crankcase of the compressor. 
Adjust the pressure to approximately 5 PSI. The next step is to prep your brazing area by covering all flammable components using a wet rag. Allow for a minimum clearance of approximately one half inch to the braze joint you are undoing. Using a neutral flame, begin unbrazing the suction line going into the compressor. Then remove the discharge line, leaving the compressor. Apply heat to the fitting, protecting the component from being removed. Allow the pipes to cool naturally. The nitrogen can be removed from the service port. Then the tubing can be moved out of the way. And the compressor can be lifted from its base and removed from the machine compartment. The inverter and the compressor can be disconnected. If needed, use pliers to disconnect the inverter and compressor. The low voltage wires going into the cabinet can be disconnected. Locate the Molex and disconnect. To remove the lower tray, unbraze the hot gas tube. Apply a wet rag to the surrounding area to protect flammable components. Apply a neutral flame, focusing the heat on the fitting, not the piping being removed. Once finished, allow the pipe to cool naturally. After the rivets have been drilled out, the brackets in front can be removed. Anytime the seal system has been opened to the atmosphere, it's strongly recommended that you change out the filter dryer on the unit. To remove the dryer, the first step is to remove the Armaflex tape from the body of the dryer. Apply a wet rag to the surrounding area to cover flammable materials. Start by removing the cap tube, then remove the condenser outlet. It's recommended to apply approximately 5 PSI of nitrogen to the system if exchanging the L and S line or removing the cap tube for any reason from the dryer. This is to clear braze material to allow the cap tube to be reinserted into the dryer. Use a hot neutral flame. Apply heat on the dryer body, not the cap tube. Extinguish any flames and allow the pipe to cool. Now the condenser outlet can be removed. Apply heat on the dryer body, not the tube. Extinguish any flames and allow the pipe to cool. The lower tray can now be removed from the cabinet. This is required to access the condenser coil. To remove the condenser, drill out the rivets. There are a total of four. This is performed after the lower tray has been removed from the cabinet. To unbraze the condenser inlet and outlet pipe, apply a wet rag to protect flammable material.
Apply a neutral flame, focusing the heat on the fitting, not the piping being removed. Once finished, allow the pipe to cool naturally. Before unbrazing the evaporator from the LNS line, move any components you don't want to burn or melt. First, cut the zip tie on this sensor probe and move it aside. Then, unhook the evaporator fan from the wire harness and pull that wire through, tucking it behind the fan. Undo these two wires from the controller cradle Pull down the insulation as far as you can without tearing it and hold it in place with a metal clamp. To remove the LNS line from the evaporator, use a brazing torch to heat the evaporator outlet and the cap tube inlet to the evaporator. Start by removing the cap tube from the evaporator in port. Using a neutral flame and long needle nose pliers, Heat the braze joint and apply a gentle downward pressure on the cap tube until it can be removed. Then do the same to remove the evaporator outlet pipe, focusing heat on the joint and applying gentle lateral pressure. The next step in removing the evaporator is to unbraze the evaporator inlet pipe fitting. Heat the joint and apply consistent lateral pressure away from the joint to remove the copper pipe. The final step in removing the evaporator is to remove the three Phillips panhead screws. There are two Phillips panhead screws on the right side and one on the left. Remove the evaporator from the compartment. To remove an L and S line, Unbraze the connection between the L and S line and the compressor. First, apply a wet rag to protect any interior components of the machine compartment. With a neutral flame, apply heat to the brazed joint while applying consistent, gentle lateral pressure away from the joint. Allow it to cool naturally. To remove the L and S line from the cabinet, Use a tubing cutter or similar method to remove the bend at the inside edge that goes into the evaporator. Unwrap or cut the cap tube with a pair of side cutters or a cap tube cutter specifically designed for cutting cap tubes. Then remove the permagum from the piping egress and ensure there is no further permagum around the armaflex that could cause it to hold up when it is removed. Like the inside of the cabinet, remove all the permagum on and around the piping egress. Take care not to damage the Armaflex if intent to reuse insulation on the new LNS line that will be installed. After removing most of the permagum, pull out the wiring harness that leads up to the inside of the cabinet compartment from the machine compartment. A foam donut goes in between the piping egresses where the foam of the cabinet is. There is also a split ring grommet. Retain both of these for the LNS line reinstallation. Firmly holding the LNS line and the Armaflex, pull down and out. Depending on the orientation, the best option is to roll it downwards. Then remove the Armaflex from the old LNS line cut the zip tie, and discard the material appropriately.